Thank you for joining us on Synthesis Workshop. On today's Research Spotlight episode, we're joined once again by Dr. Craig Day. Craig has previously joined us to talk about his mechanistic work on nickel-catalyzed Nagishi couplings, as well as his work on iron-catalyzed desidation reactions. To quickly reintroduce Craig, he did his master's work at the University of Ottawa under the supervision of Professor Darren Fogg, and completed his PhD at ICIQ in the group of Professor Ruben Martin. He's also done a research stay in the Hartwig Group at UC Berkeley, and currently he's a postdoc at Aarhus University in Denmark in the Scourge Trip Group. If you enjoyed today's talk, I'd also encourage you to have a look at Craig's other talks on this channel. And from there, I'll hand the floor over to you, Craig. Thank you very much for coming back once again. Thank you, Matt, for the kind introduction and giving me the opportunity to share my research in a Synthesis Workshop episode. This workshop will cover our recent publication in Nature Catalysis, where we investigate comproportionation, disproportionation, and reduction events of nickel complexes bearing polyperidine ligands. From this understanding, we are then able to rationalize additive effects in nickel catalysis and provide blueprints for future reaction development. Nickel catalysis has emerged as a powerful tool in modern synthetic chemistry and offers a greener and more sustainable alternative to late transition metals such as palladium. Importantly, nickel also offers other advantages to these late transition metal catalysts that can be traced back to its fundamental properties. These properties include nickel being a relatively hard transition metal with a low electronegativity and small atomic radius, which means it's very capable at undergoing oxidative addition reactions. These oxidative addition reactions can be broken into two types, first being those typically covered in undergraduate organometallic courses that occur by two electron pathways, such as concerted or SN2 type oxidative addition pathways. But also increasingly commonly proposed in nickel catalysis is nickel's ability to undergo single electron transfer reactions to form open shelled radical species. This ability of nickel to undergo single electron transfer can be traced back to its low SOMO and ability to readily occupy odd and even oxidation states, such as nickel 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4. Furthermore, nickel has a quite low reduction potential, which has seen tremendous interest from the synthetic community in reductive coupling reactions. These unique properties have allowed for breakthrough synthetic advances in the last two decades. However, a common theme in the field is that many of these reactions are poorly understood which means arduous screening efforts are often required to achieve the desired reactivity. This presentation will aim at providing an understanding to comproportionation, disproportionation, and reduction events, which involve nickel changing between oxidation states and are central reactions commonly encountered in nickel catalysis, but have been often overlooked. Cross-electrophile coupling reactions have been particularly mild and impactful methods to prepare complex organic frameworks from simple precursors and avoid the need to prepare reactive organometallic reagents. Of the ligands used in these reactions, polypyridine ligands are amongst the most general and active. They have also been tremendously successful with the merger of photocatalysis. Shown in this scheme are three cases in which multiple electrophiles have been used as synthetic handles to afford the coupled product with high selectivity to access structures that would be otherwise difficult to construct. These functionalities include organic halides, which are commonly encountered in transition metal catalysis but also include less conventional electrophiles, such as alcohols, carbon dioxide, or carboxylic acids. Interestingly, a common theme in many of these nickel-catalyzed reactions are high catalyst loadings are often required to achieve meaningful reaction rates. We believe these high loadings were due to poor catalyst commitment in which the majority of catalysts was present as off-cycle species. We also believe that comproportionation, disproportionation, and reduction events were overlooked reactions that controlled this catalyst speciation, and were responsible for either formation of on-cycle or off-cycle species. Looking through the literature on these reactions, they date back to 1964, where triphenylphosphine ligated nickel-0 complexes react with nickel-2 halides in comproportionation to form nickel-1 species. This reaction makes a decent amount of intuitive sense since nickel-0 is a strong reductant in this case, which reduces nickel-2 to nickel-1. Interestingly, the same paper, they also show that piacetic phosphite ligands promote the opposite disproportionation reaction from nickel-1 to form nickel-0 and nickel-2 species. This can be rationalized as the electron-rich nickel-0 is being stabilized by the piacetic phosphite ligands. Further reviewing the literature, the general trend of nickel halide complexes is that they react in comproportionation reactions between nickel-2 and nickel-0 to form the resultant nickel-1 species. This can be observed with polypyridine ligands, NHCs, and aryl and alkyl phosphines. Interested in the model ligand system to study these reactions further, we first aim to study a complex with high solubility in conventional organic solvents such as THF. 
Standard ligands such as bipyridine were very poorly soluble. However, improved solubility was found with the 2,6-dimethyl variant named neocuparine. A further improvement in solubility was found with funnel groups on the backbone substituents in bathrocuparine L4. Another consideration we had was the need to study a well-defined ligand system. It was well described in the literature that simple bipyridine ligands do not meet this criteria since they form species with multiple ligands ligated in solution and also form nicolate complexes. However, complexes bearing L4 exist as a single species due to the steric crowding of the metal center from the 2,6-dimethyl substituents. Lastly, we also wanted to meet the criteria of a ligand system that was relevant to catalysis, which L4 met. It has been used in multiple reductive coupling reactions, such as the top case in the reductive carboxylation of allylic alcohols, or in the migratory coupling of alkyl and aryl bromides. With these criteria met, we hoped that the study would allow us to rationalize the ability of proposed on-cycle species to interconvert between each other and provide new and meaningful understanding in the field of nickel catalysis. Deciding to continue our study with L4, we then began to synthesize a series of nickel-2 pseudohalide complexes from the anion exchange on the corresponding nickel-2 chloride complex. This could be achieved by reacting the nickel-2 halide complex with the corresponding salt to access the nickel-2 pivolate, phenoxide, and benzoate complexes in complexes 1 to 3. With these complexes in hand, we then went on to study the comproportionation and disproportionation reactions. As previously described in the literature, nickel-2 halides reacted with nickel-0 species in comproportionation to form the nickel-1 halides in high yields. Interestingly, however, the same reaction with the nickel-2 pseudohalide complexes resulted in no reaction, and we could recover the nickel-0 and nickel-2 complexes. Assuming that electron transfer events have low kinetic barriers, this inability of the nickel-2 pseudohalides to undergo comproportionation suggested that the reverse disproportionation should be thermodynamically favorable and spontaneous. In order to study this hypothesis, we aim to synthesize the corresponding nickel-1 pseudohalide species and study its reactivity. This was achieved through monitoring the anion exchange of the nickel-1 chloride with potassium pivolate, where the EPR spectrum of the nickel-1 chloride is shown here. The reaction with potassium pivolate would generate a nickel-1 carboxylate, which our studies in the previous slide suggested would undergo spontaneous disproportionation to nickel-0 and nickel-2. Importantly to note is that nickel-1 carboxylate complexes of this type are often proposed as key intermediates in reductive carboxylation reactions and are suggested to be reduced to nickel zero. Performing this reaction, we observe a complete loss of the EPR signal for any nickel one species. And by proton NMR, we are able to observe full conversion to the corresponding nickel zero and nickel two complexes. This experiment is consistent with those performed previously, where the nickel one carboxylate undergoes spontaneous disproportionation to nickel zero and nickel two. Likewise, this suggests that nickel-1 carboxylate complexes proposing catalytic cycles of reductive carboxylation reactions are not directly reduced to nickel-0, but undergo disproportionation to nickel-0 and nickel-2. The relevance of this will be highlighted later in the presentation. DFT studies on the comproportionation reaction of nickel halide complexes supports low kinetic barriers, which is consistent with kinetic measurements performed by UV-Vis, where the comproportionation reaction was complete in seconds. Furthermore, the key transition state described a nickel halide bridge complex that is involved in the electron transfer and does not involve direct metal metal interactions. Further DFT studies find that the orbital interactions between the nickel 1 halide and pseudo halide ligands were key to controlling if comproportionation or disproportionation occurred. The nickel 1 halide complexes show significant pi back donation, which decreases the spin density on nickel 1 and stabilizes the nickel 1 complex. This same pi back donation interactions are not found with the nickel pseudohalide complexes, which destabilize them and favor the disproportionation to nickel zero and nickel two. These electron transfer reactions were also investigated by cyclic photometry studies, with the CVs of the nickel broban complex shown here. Looking at the CV, there are three distinct regions which correspond to the reduction of nickel two to nickel one, and then from nickel one to nickel zero. These redox peaks also appear to be electrochemically reversible. The CV is consistent with the complex that would react in a comproportionation reaction since the nickel zero species is able to reduce the nickel two complex to form a stable nickel one species. Now shown is the CV of the nickel two pivolate complex, which you can see is very different from the nickel two bromide complex. This CV only shows one reduction peak for the direct reduction of nickel two to nickel zero, 
and is also at a quite negative potential compared to the nickel 2 bromide complex. Additionally, the reduction is also electrochemically irreversible. The CV is consistent with the complex that would react by disproportionation, since there is no stable nickel 1 oxidation state. Further DFT calculations find that the spin density associated with the nickel 1 complex is connected to how thermodynamically favorable comproportionation or disproportionation will be. Complexes with lower spin density on nickel 1 tend to favor comproportionation, while complexes with higher spin density favor disproportionation. Importantly, this suggests that the distinction in these reactions is not simply halide versus pseudohalide, and that it is instead about the ability of the X ligand to lower the spin density on nickel 1 to favor comproportionation. Performing these CV studies, we also noticed that the reduction of the nickel 2 pivolate complex to nickel 0 was significantly more challenging than the reduction of the nickel 2 halide. We therefore questioned if the generation of these nickel-2 pseudohalides would be reduced to nickel-0 in the presence of commonly used reductants, such as zinc or manganese. Comparing the CVs of these reductants, we observed reduction potentials that were very similar, and as such it was unclear if this reduction would occur. First, we performed the direct reduction of the nickel-2 halide to nickel-0 with both zinc and manganese, which resulted in the rapid reduction to the resultant nickel-0 species. We then attempted the same reduction, but this time with the nickel-2 pivolate complex, in which we only observed recovered starting material and no reduction to nickel-0 was observed. We speculated that exogenous halide sources, however, would be able to transform the nickel-2 pivolate complex to the nickel-2 halide, which would then be reduced to nickel-0. Indeed, this turned out to be the case, with both zinc bromide and lithium bromide acting as competent halide sources to promote the reduction to nickel-0. The use of zinc bromide as a halide source is particularly noteworthy, as commonly used nickel precatalysts bear halide ligands, which are utilized in reductive coupling reactions, which therefore can form catalytic quantities of the zinc dibromide, which would assist in catalysis. To study the relevance of these findings in cross electrophile coupling reactions, we turned to studying the migratory correlation of alkyl bromides. We speculated that poisoning experiments of pseudohala additives would promote the formation of off-cycle species and slow the overall rate of reaction. Following the reaction profile, we see that the blue trace is the standard aerolation conditions, which is complete after 4 hours. Shown in the teal trace is the same reaction conditions, but potassium pivolate is added after 60 minutes, which shows a significant decrease in reaction rate, and that we could also observe the formation of the nickel-2 pivolate complex by Maldi mass spectrometry of the reaction mixture after 2 hours. Lastly, in the gray trace, we perform the standard aerolation conditions using the nickel 2 pivolate complex as a precatalyst and removed any exogenous halide sources, such as in the tetrabutyl ammonium bromide. Monitoring this reaction for 90 minutes, we do not observe any formation of product, which is consistent with the nickel 2 pivolate complex being unable to be reduced. However, after 90 minutes, we added in the exogenous halide source and the catalytic activity was restored which is consistent with the formation of on-cycle nickel halide complexes. We then aim to study the reactions in which these nickel-1 pseudohalide complexes are generated as on-cycle species, such as in the reductive carboxylation reaction of allylic alcohols. Notably, when the primary source of exogenous halide in magnesium chloride is removed, a significant loss in yield is observed. However, as we had previously described, there is still the halide source in zinc bromide that is generated from the reduction of the precatalyst. As shown in the previous slide, attempting to use the nickel-2 pivolate complex as a precatalyst without any exogenous halide sources resulted in no reactivity. Furthermore, when using nickel cod as a precatalyst without a halide source also resulted in no formation of the carboxylated product. Looking to extend the generality of these findings, we began to study if these results extended to bipyridine ligands. Shown here is a CV of a bipyridine ligated nickel-2 bromide complex which shows multiple reduction signals from nickel-2 to nickel-1 and then to nickel-0. The reduction signals are not as clear as with the L4 ligated complexes due to the complications of the multiple species generated in situ with bipyridine ligands. However, the CV does roughly show multiple reduction steps consistent with the formation of nickel-1 species. Shown in green is the CV of a bipyridine ligated nickel-2 pivolate complex which has a similar feature to the nickel-2 pivolate complex with L4. Instead of multiple reduction peaks, we observe only a single peak at a lower potential than the nickel-2 bromide analog. 
This is consistent with a direct reduction from nickel 2 to nickel 0, as previously described. To extend these findings to reactions using simple polypyridine ligands, such as in diterpyridyl bipyridine, that may form nickel pseudohalide complexes as on cycle species, we perform the reductive coupling of alkyl toslates with alkyl bromides. As noted earlier, removing the exogenous halide source in Ki resulted in a significant loss in yield, while using nickel cod in addition to removing Ki only gave trace quantities of product. The competence of nickel cod as a precatalyst, however, could be regenerated by the addition of Ki as a halide source. Together, this work provides a comprehensive picture of the fundamental reactions of comproportionation, disproportionation, and reduction events in nickel complexes through a combination of experimental and computational studies. We also demonstrate that a subtle modification of the X ligand from halide to pseudohalide changes if comproportionation or disproportionation occurs, where the halide ligand can undergo favorable pi back donation to stabilize the nickel 1 species and favor comproportionation which is not the case for the pseudohalide analogs. Notably, the effect of the anionic ligand also affects the reduction potentials of the corresponding nickel-2 complex, which makes them more difficult to reduce and unreactive to common reductants such as manganese or zinc. This is unlike their nickel halide analogs. Furthermore, we demonstrate that these electron transfer reactions play a significant role in controlling the speciation of both on-cycle and off-cycle species in nickel catalysis. With that said, I'd like to thank my supervisor, Ruben Martin, for his continued support and insight during this project in graduate school, and the Martin Group for making work that much more enjoyable. I'd also like to thank the BIST and European Union for helping fund this work. If you have any questions about this work or working at the ICIQ, you can contact me on LinkedIn or by email. Thank you for your attention, and I hope you enjoyed the presentation. Have a nice day. Thank you for joining us on this Research Spotlight episode, and thank you to Craig for another very interesting talk. If you enjoyed this episode, you can support us by subscribing and telling your peers about this podcast, and feel free to send us any questions or comments you have. Follow us on Twitter to stay up to date, and see you all next time.